In this video, I'm going to show you how Autodesk accounts work. A lot of people don't understand this correctly. And the biggest thing most people seem to get wrong is that a company does not own or create your user account. And I'll explain in this video. So first we'll notice that Revit 2024 is running in the background and my username is dan.stein. And then I have my company email address plugged in and I'm going to hit next. Once I'm logged into my account, if I go to my personal settings area and then on this page I click on security, you'll notice that I have a username and then I also have an email address. Both of these things can be edited and the big thing is that your username is attached to something called an object GUID. The email address can actually be changed. So for example, if you leave this company and go to another company, you just edit this and type in your new email address. I'll explain about how all the entitlements and software assignments work in a moment. But the biggest reason you never want to delete an Autodesk account or just leave it behind is because of this my community section. So if you go down to my profile, there's lots of things that are associated with this account. For example, Autodesk affiliations, Autodesk expert elite, Autodesk university, things not showing up here as well. I have some tabs open, the Autodesk feedback community and the Autodesk developer network and then any certifications that you have and all of this community contribution. If you delete or abandon this account and create a new one, you lose all of that information. So now that I've sort of made this point, let's step back a minute and look at how an account for most people is initially first created which seems to have been created by your employer, but actually it's just a notification prompting you to make a new account. So if we look at this from the employer side for a minute, and I just made a bunch of screenshots here because I needed to redact a bunch of information. So if I'm employer XYZ and you're just starting at my company, I'm gonna go into the user management section of the company's Autodesk portal and click invite user. I'm gonna type in the person's name and email address. This is an email address that the company gave you. And once it's set up, you'll receive an email in that company inbox. But notice there's no password here. The company's not making a password for you. So this in fact doesn't create an Autodesk account for an individual. And then once the account has been created in the Autodesk portal, even though the Autodesk account technically doesn't exist, the employer can start assigning applications and entitlements to that user that they created. So for example, I go to Revit and click assign user and I can add more Revit users. So I click assign, I type in their email and now whenever that user ultimately creates their account properly and goes into Revit, they can start using it right away when they log in with the username and then the password that they created, the end user created when they create their Autodesk account. I go into BIM Collaborate Pro. Now this one's particularly tricky, um, and sp especially from the uh, employer's perspective because there's an extra layer of complexity that the employer actually doesn't have control over when an employee leaves a company. So I can assign a BIM Collaborate Pro entitlement to that user. In fact, you can assign it to anybody with an email address. It doesn't even have to be one of your own employees, for example. And that just gives that user, if they have a Revit license, the entitlement to access BIM Collaborate Pro. So you click assign user, type in their name. And so now that user has, in this case, a Revit license and a BIM 360 entitlement. Um, this 
single sign-on isn't particularly important in this case, but I highlighted this one section that you'll that helps make the point that I'm trying to make here is that Autodesk uses the email address to initially connect the auto the company's software entitlements to the user. But once that connection is established, it actually uses something under the hood called an object GUID. And that object GUID follows the person around. So for example, when I left my previous company, I just went in to my Autodesk account. And changed my email address. And then when my new company gave entitlements to that new email address, it automatically already found me in the system. I didn't actually have to create a new account. And then once that happened, it connected the new company's software entitlements to my object GUID. So now that my company has assigned me a Revit license and a BIM 360 entitlement, if an administrator of the BIM 360 hub goes into that system and assigns Jane.do as a user to a project, this is a, the tricky part where this has no connection to the software and entitlements that have been assigned to me. So when a person leaves a company and the company removes the license access in the BIM 360 entitlement, that user at that particular moment might not have access to the project if that user hasn't been removed from the project in the hub. But in my case, for example, I was assigned to a project by another company that my previous company was working with and they didn't remove me from the project. So when my new company gave me access to Revit and a BIM 360 entitlement, and I logged into Revit, all of a sudden I could see that project and even access it from my previous company because that other company didn't know I left that company, even though I ended up, of course, emailing them and telling them because I didn't actually want to see the project, yet alone work on it or go into it. So that's one thing that you have to be really careful of because in my case, as I said, I maintained my same Autodesk account between multiple companies so I don't use or so I don't lose all of these badges and entitlements that I have access to directly between me and Autodesk. So interestingly enough, if you go back into your personal user account where you can change your email to, from your current company to your next company, for example, um, there's also this opportunity to edit your username. And so you have to do this yourself, but there's some interesting things you could do here or your company could encourage people to do to manage the username. Notice that dan.stein is my username. That's the same name that's showing up here in Revit in the upper right. So if I, and of course I did edit this, the initial number is some cryptic thing. And this is the name that shows up when other people see that a work set's checked out in Revit and who the user is that has it. And then in Revit, um, if you go, just to kind of show this point, if you go into Revit's options, the username is dan.stein. So by coming in here and editing this, this, will sh this change will show up everywhere. So notice a unique name that identifies you in products and discussion groups. So this will also show up in the Autodesk forums. So that can be changed here, and then it'll trickle through to show up everywhere that you log in to your Autodesk account. So the main takeaway here is that an Autodesk account is created by an individual, and that Autodesk account can stay and generally should stay with the individual. A company initiates the prompt to create an account when they add that user into the system. But if that user already exists, i.e. they have an Autodesk account and they change their email address to the new company's email that was just invited, Autodesk will automatically connect the two. 
if it's your first time using an Autodesk product, you click the link in the email and then you create a new account. You haven't actually been given a new account. It's just a prompt to create a new account. So hopefully this is helpful, a little bit long-winded, not too interesting to look at on the screen, but generally helpful information.